All right, so more on the lab environment that we've been talking about. I know a lot of people, this is a cross between a few suggestions here. A lot of people are interested in seeing how you can build out your own lab environment, what type of things you can do, and how you can use that to really learn a lot more and a lot get like really targeted practice on something. I'm combining that with also the request to do a little bit more Windows content, right? So we're going to combine the two, right? Say that you're someone who wants to get more practice with Windows systems, Active Directory, and all of those cool uh, hacker techniques you can use in an Active Directory environment. Well, you can bring uh, a Windows server into your lab, right? And set up Active Directory yourself and conduct various attacks. So let's just get started with that. I am starting from scratch, just like all of you guys here. I do have some Windows systems, but they're just Windows 10 boxes, Windows 7 here. Um, what I want to do is I want to actually grab a Windows server, because with Windows, it does matter whether it's the server edition or if it's a client, like a Windows 10, right? They're actually a little bit different, right? You can't use active, you can't uh, configure a domain controller uh, on a Windows 10 box, right? As far as I'm aware, at least. Uh, so we're going to grab Windows Server 2016. That is probably the most standard version you'll see uh, in a corporate environment or in, in the real world, right? Now, they are rolling out Windows Server 2019, but uh, we're going to do 2016 here because that's still the standard. It'll be a while till we see a lot of Windows Server 2019, most likely. So what I would search for is I can search for... Uh, Windows Server, simple as that, right? And down here, I'll see this Microsoft link. Now, it says 2019, but let's see if they offer anything else here as well. And uh, as you see here, try Windows Server. So we can either do it through Azure Cloud or on-prem. We're going to choose on-prem. Download free trial. We'll click that. We're just going to get a free trial version, and we'll choose Windows 2016. Now, we get this for 180 days, so you actually get this for a long time. You get six months, um, to be exact. And uh, we're going to download the ISO file. And so we're going to have to enter in some info, so I will enter that in, and then we'll get started here. So now that I've entered that information in, I see a download button here for the ISO and actually, it did start automatically. Uh, it turns out, so let me just cancel this one here. And yeah, it's uh, quite a large file. Windows boxes take up a lot more space than Linux. So that's just something to keep in mind there. It is a pretty big file. So it's going to take a moment. So basically, the strategy we're going to do here, right? Download an ISO file. And we're, gonna, uh, we're going to create a new machine in VirtualBox. While we're waiting, we'll get started on that. So we could say Win 2016. So I created a new folder to store it in. And then we will say Windows. It already actually defaulted to the correct info here. Now with Windows boxes, you always need to give it more resources than Linux. So we'll, I have quite a bit of RAM here. I'll give it eight gigs in this case. We'll have it create the virtual hard disk and 50 gigs, I think should be okay here. Hopefully we're going to recreate it down the line, but uh, yeah, we'll get started with that. Now, the next thing we need to do is once this does complete, we need to connect the, uh, the ISO. We need to mount it. So we'll go to storage and we'll see should see an optical drive where we can mount it. Okay, yeah, here we go. You click the little CD icon, add, and we will wait until it completes, and that's where we'll, we'll mount it up once it's ready. And another thing to mention is, you know, I do have these other Windows 10 boxes. I can actually add them to my domain. So this... This box here can be my domain controller, and I can have uh, a bunch of user create a bunch of user accounts and use these Windows 7 boxes and 10 box here to be part of that domain. So just thinking ahead here of how I can 
demonstrate different things, how I can set up my lab. And you could definitely do the same, right? You can go on Microsoft and download, uh, to, the way I got Windows 10 was a Microsoft Edge trial. <laughs> so you could download a Windows 10 VM. So you could just download a bunch of those and, uh, or even just one of them. And you can use that as part of your Windows domain. So this has completed now. So I click the plus sign on the CD icon here. And we're going to refresh. And in this case, we're still not seeing it. So what we're going to do is we're going to say add and find it right here in downloads. So we select this, choose, and now we see it here. And we can get rid of this empty thing here. And now that's going to basically simulate as if the Windows CD was in our disk tray when we start this up. Because we need to install the operating system, which is normally pretty straightforward, but I'll show you guys how to do that. And we're just kind of clicking through. And another thing to note is that we can't really full screen this yet because we didn't install VirtualBox guest editions in order to get the full screen support and things like that. So it is going to be a bit small right now, and I can't really do much about that. So apologies for you guys viewing at home if it's really difficult to uh, to see my screen. And unfortunately, the cursor, okay, it was super laggy there. It did, once I clicked it, kind of corrected itself. All right, and so when I get here, this is where it really matters what you choose. Now, it defaults to, because this is my second go around, the first time off camera when I when I chose this one, it will install without a GUI, so all you get is the blinking Windows command prompt. That's it. Now, if you choose desktop experience, then you'll actually get the GUI that you're used to, right? It even says in the description. So sometimes we have a tendency to click through, right? So really pay attention to what you select here. This is the one we're going to want, right? Useful when a GUI is required. Yeah, and basically the only difference here is like the size of your organization. So since this is just in our lab environment, we're cool to select standard here. Just make sure you choose desktop experience. That's the big, the big part here. And then from here, I always prefer the custom installation. So I'm going to do custom. And now we allocate space to our drive. We partition it. Since we only have one drive, it's pretty easy. If you guys ever uh, built a computer and installed Windows, you might have multiple drives, in which case you got to, you want to choose, like say if you have a hard drive, and an SSD, right? You want to choose the SSD because it's going to boot. Windows is going to boot faster. It's going to run a lot faster and smoother uh, versus if it was on a mechanical hard drive. But of course, we don't have to worry about any of that in this case. Now, yeah, it is going to take a minute to install. And that's just part of, you know, installing an operating system. And there's always a lot of things that need to be uh, downloaded and installed and whatnot. So, what you're going to notice is it's going to restart my VM multiple times. And uh, yeah, Windows loves to reboot after its updates and installations. So yeah, I'm just going to skip through all of this. But if you're following along at home step by step, don't worry. I'm not going to skip any steps on you. Uh, I'm just going to fast forward through some of this waiting. All right. So after a couple of reboots, it brought me to this screen where I'd, all I need to do is set a password and confirm the password and yeah pretty quick there wasn't much to actually select or choose um, surprisingly now you might be wondering how do I enter control alt delete if I just do that like this it'll actually be for my computer I don't know if you saw that or not what you want to do you can come up here to devices and uh, or input rather keyboard and then insert control alt delete I think there's multiple ways to do there's other ways to do it as well that's what I typically do. And now I'll just put in my password and I have logged in as the administrator account. Now there's some maintenance work we were going to want to do like installing guest edition so that we can get this in full screen and <laughs> it'll make it a lot easier on everyone to see. Now it might just be black screening here because I'm trying to full screen it. Sometimes that happens. No, it's just a little bit slow here. Um, but yeah, as you see here, this is what we have. Looks a lot like Windows 10. Um, as I'm sure you guys probably noticed here. And we're probably going to need to allocate it a little bit, like another CPU or something like that could run a little bit better. But yeah, we can click here. If you notice, this is what's unique about 
the Windows Server, right? We have the Server Manager uh, dashboard here. And you may have seen it before if you have worked in IT and interface with some Windows systems. This is what a Windows Server looks like, basically. It has this manager. And yeah, we're definitely going to need to give this a little bit more power because it is pretty slow at the moment. Nothing surprising there. Windows VMs require a lot of resources. But yeah, it, it gives you all kinds of options here. And through this is actually how we can uh, set it up as a domain controller. So we're going to do that in a, in a future video. Let's just finish off by, this is what I would do, right? Say I, I did all everything that I did, right? Now I want to I wanna optimize this so I can full screen this, right? You don't want to see me doing this whole series in this tiny window, I'm sure. So what I can do is click devices and then say insert guest editions CD image. I'll minimize that. And when you do it on Linux, it does try to automatically run it and it'll prompt you. Uh, it should do that here as well. It's probably just being slow because... Yeah, this is not very fast. <laughs> so when I click that, it didn't actually prompt me for anything. But when I opened my Windows File Explorer and I expanded this PC, I do see VirtualBox Guest Editions here. So I'm going to double click that and run the installer here, just the regular Windows Editions. Uh, this should be the 64-bit version because we do have a 64-bit operating system. If I'm not mistaken now... Okay, yeah, this is only going to take one gig. At first, I thought it was going to take 38 gigs. I was like, that can't be right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll just set it up with all this. Everything, we'll run everything default pretty much here. And allow it to install whatever it needs. And, yeah, we'll just have it reboot now, and we'll see if that fixes the issue. Now, another thing we're going to need to do is say, hey, uh, drag and drop, let's enable that. And let's say shared clipboard enable as well, so we can copy-paste between. It's just going to make for a much better experience. So I'll make this small for right now, and once I log in, I'll try to full screen it. We'll send that. Well, again, and now we'll try full screening it and it didn't work, but there is something we can try to do from here. Sometimes you got to play around with this a little bit. Full screen mode, not full screen mode. What was, oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> that actually, yeah, it actually did work. It just took a second is all. Um, but yeah, now we are, now we have this in full screen. We can definitely make this a lot bigger and yeah, sorry, uh, Apologies if you had to bear with me through this installation. Everything was really small. There was not really much I could do about that until I had guest editions installed and I had to install the OS first. But yeah, here we are. We have this um, dashboard here. And through this, like I said, is where we will be installing this as a domain controller. So yeah, thanks for watching the video so far. Hopefully you're enjoying this. Let me know if this is something that you're interested in down in the comments section below and we will just if if there's enough interest we'll continue this and set up a, our own windows domain controller you know have uh, some of those windows clients be part of that domain have some users there as well and we will configure it uh, in vulnerable ways and uh, abuse those vulnerabilities to uh, pull off various windows attacks that you would see in an active directory environment and uh, if you want to uh, get into similar content to this, like where we're attacking stuff and we are really doing offensive security, you know, pen tester type of work. Check out my playlist, what you need to know for OSCP on the screen right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.